How do you properly pay tribute to a life well lived? How can one find all of the words necessary to summarize all of the great achievements a public figure accomplished? The answer is, you really can't. Or rather, I can't. In sitting here writing the video that you are eventually seeing on YouTube, there was just so much that I could try to say about the late and great thespian James Earl Jones, who passed away a few weeks ago on September 9th from complications onset by type 2 diabetes. He fortunately got to live a long life, having died at the age of 93. In those many decades that he spent on planet Earth, he built what can easily be described as a legacy due to his invaluable contributions to art and culture. Obviously, most people know him as the voices of Darth Vader in the Star Wars saga and Mufasa in both film versions of The Lion King, but he had an illustrious career across all kinds of media, the stage especially, but certainly cinema and television as well. Because of how much he did across so many different productions over the years, I could just talk about what he contributed to my favorite movies, and that would be enough to fill up the air for an entire video. My long history as a Star Wars fan would be enough, given how much James Earl Jones cemented a reputation as the calculated, sinister voice of a corrupted Anakin Skywalker. But again, I sit here and wonder if it's even worth doing that. After all, that's the easy thing that everyone else would do. It's simple for a content farm like Watch Mojo to just list off the credits of a well-known actor, say that they had a long, illustrious career, and call it a day. I would assume most everyone else would talk about how much James Earl Jones impacted their childhood due to his work in his most famous roles, and if they do, I don't have a problem with that personally. What real reward is there in recounting his career, though, when you can just read off his massive list of credits on somewhere like Wikipedia and IMDb? I wouldn't go so far as to say it's useless information, but trivia can only take you so far in getting to know a person or understanding their legacy. Now, I wrote those words as my infant daughter was trying to crawl across the floor to where I was sitting and typing on my laptop. And thinking of the legacy he left behind, I also pondered on what my child could learn from his legacy. Then everything clicked for me in terms of what I could say about James Earl Jones. His legacy is something we all could learn and benefit from, so I hope what I say about that can impact you in some way, just as his life impacted mine. You see, when people talk about becoming famous, what does that look like nowadays? I'm sure your immediate thought isn't that someone becomes a respected politician, builds a successful business, or makes a contribution to science that garners them a Nobel Prize, or in the case of James Earl Jones, become known as one of the greatest actors of all time. No, the modern definition of fame is something akin to gaining clout on social media. You know, getting 10,000 followers on Instagram or Twitch might be enough to convince someone that there is some semblance of value to their life. But what does social media train people to want? Instant gratification. Believe me, this video is not a rant about social media, and I did not intend for it to be one. I bring it up, though, because it is a huge contributor to a growing distortion in society where people believe that they are entitled to not only success, but that they should get it immediately. It's easy to look at the struggles people have and not only make excuses for their circumstances, but think some miraculous event in their life will turn things around for them. The reality is that the people who have achieved true fulfillment in life generally have overcome a lot of strife in their pursuit of it. James Earl Jones is one such person. One thing that stood out to me in reading up on his life story is that he had developed a stutter early in his life as a response to heavy, family-related trauma. Really? The guy with one of the most prominent and thunderously powerful voices of any Hollywood actor had a severe stutter? Apparently he did, as a result of being compelled to move from his hometown in Mississippi to live with his grandparents on the other side of the country in Michigan, and the following clip is a snippet of an interview where he recounts a memory of it. It wasn't that I stopped talking, it's that I, I resolved that talking was too difficult. You see, in, in the move from Mississippi to Michigan, you would think it would be a jubilant journey for a young boy of, uh, I was then five years old, to going to the land of the, the promised land, you know. Uh, for me, though, it was leaving the soil that I had touched with my bare feet. And I didn't know if I'd ever touch soil with my, with my bare feet again. And that was traumatic for me. I was leaving Huck Finn world. And, and forget social problem. I was leaving the, the earth of Mississippi, the, the clay soil of, along the banks of the Mississippi River. And that, that, that was a trauma for me. 
I'll link the full interview in the description for anyone who would like to read up on it later. Needless to say, he talks about how he was basically a mute for most of his school years, and that continued until a high school English teacher pushed him to overcome his disability through the recitation of poetry, which he had observed as something that James was passionate for. It obviously would have taken James Earl Jones a great deal of emotional fortitude and effort to move past his debilitating stutter. This wouldn't have been an overnight success. But having someone believe in him enough to challenge him to stop feeling sorry for himself would have been a major turning point in and of itself. I know for myself that the teachers who took a genuine interest in me were the ones I respected the most, and James Earl Jones's story is one of many where teachers went above and beyond in changing the lives of their students. It's even more meaningful that the act of overcoming adversity led to James Earl Jones turning one of his greatest weaknesses into a towering source of strength. But the narrative does not end there. It would still be many years before this now esteemed man would become a household name. Throughout his 20s, he spent much of his time working, studying, and serving in the military. Acting wasn't even his chosen profession during his university studies. How often is it that people go into college thinking that they're going to end up as one thing and completely change their mind later on? Again, his experience is comparable to that of so many people, myself included. Eventually, he would go on to become a respected stage actor on Broadway, earning a reputation as an accomplished performer of Shakespeare's prose. He was basically on the same level of respect among American thespians that his British counterparts like Patrick Stewart and Kenneth Branagh would have been on West End. Even still, for roles that would make him an international household name like his performances in Star Wars, Field of Dreams, and The Lion King, he was well into his 50s and even 60s by that time. At his own request, he had gone uncredited as the voice of Darth Vader for the first two films in the original trilogy, only receiving a credit for Return of the Jedi upon release. By the time Return of the Jedi came out, he was 52, and it wouldn't be until the special editions released in 1997 that he would retroactively receive an official voiceover credit for all three films. Now you may be wondering, why am I focusing so heavily on his age in recounting all of this? Well, the important thing to understand about James Earl Jones is that his prestige and reputation grew over a long period of time. It took decades for him to get complete recognition for his talents and accomplishments. I can't speak for whatever sort of outlook he had on his own life, but he didn't seem like the sort of guy who complained about his circumstances. In fact, he was quite the trailblazer, landing roles and breaking ground for others of his ethnicity when it wasn't wasn't common for African Americans to land lead roles in plays, let alone for Shakespearean productions. His tale is inspiring not only for the fact that he was a well-accomplished man who overcame his personal struggles, but that nobody is ever too late in life to lose their chance at success. If you still don't quite know what you want to do in life at the age of 25, that's okay. I'm telling you that as much as I'm telling myself as a 29-year-old man. Contrary to what society may try to tell you, not everything has to be figured out when you're in ninth grade and trying to fight a face full of acne. Life has its many challenges, and for some, those difficulties will be tougher to overcome. One man's severe stutter could be another man's mental illness, crippling addiction, or permanent injury. But whatever your circumstances might be, there is no such thing as failure until you've given up. James Earl Jones did not falter in his pursuit of happiness after all. He overcame the challenges of his difficult childhood, waded through the existential fears of figuring out what path to take in life, and then patiently worked his way up to the reputation he eventually developed. Not everyone will find all that they hope for or become who they hope to be early in life. If you haven't gotten to that point yet, keep at it. Your time will come. Remember that James Earl Jones is someone who didn't accomplish everything alone either. His chief debilitating issue, his stutter, was something he broke out of as a result of a teacher encouraging him to pursue something beyond himself. Whether or not your confidant is a partner, manager, therapist, pastor, or someone else who holds a meaningful interest in your life, there is no shame in seeking out someone who can motivate you in your journey to achieve something greater. For me, right now I have a personal dream coach at my place of work who challenges me to pursue my goals, whether they be increasing my output on YouTube or maintaining a healthier lifestyle. True, lasting success will not come overnight. Do not mourn for a life that has ended. Memorialize a life that was well lived, and one that can serve as a beacon of hope for so many discouraged people in the world. Rejoice for those around you who transform into the Force. 
James Earl Jones will be remembered in the pop culture zeitgeist as a guy with an unforgettable voice. It's my hope, however, that we may remember him as an inspirational figure who proved that one does not need to concede to the challenges which beset them. It's okay to struggle and take one's time to figure out what their path is, and James Earl Jones taught us that. May we all learn how to live according to his great example, and may James Earl Jones rest in peace. You be careful. Ha, 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 ha.